Hey guys, so today I wanted to kind of prove that the backyard business model is very lucrative. So they act, sometimes a person will list the products they are going to dome. So this is a, a person who will buy it and then they will open it for you. And many times they'll just put it on the list so they don't actually make the public, the prices public. So finally I was able to get some prices. So. 2021 Contenders Optic, they charged $750. Last night, a lot of people bought that product. On Dave and Adams, you can get that today for $500. So they not only are making the profit that Dave and Adams would be making from selling the product, assuming there is some type of margin. I know it retails to $750, but in this current market, hey, products are going to go down in price the value of the cards in them are going down and therefore the sealed product is also going down. This is something we see in Magic as well and Pokemon as well. In this current marketplace, yes, this product may have been $750 a year ago, but or half a year ago when it came upon release, but it's no longer. And they charged more at that point in time as well. So they're making a fifth, at least a 50% margin compared to Dave and Adams who will ship it to you as well. 2021, 2022 NBA National Treasures. Many people opened that. That is $5,399. 2022 Black NFL Hobby, $375. 2022 Gold Standard NFL, $515. 2021 Flawless NFL, $9,250. And I'm gonna just read the list and I'm gonna tell you what the margins look like and why this is kind of impressive. Maybe not in the best way for the, and then I'll talk about box breaking and why I don't do it anymore. iMac 2021 NBA, $2,750. NFL Just Break It, MEM, $1,000. National Treasure Soccer World Cup 2020, uh, $2,999. I believe Dave and Adams has cases of four. I believe they come in a case of four for less than $8,000 or $9,000 last time I checked. So that's a big up as well because then they're getting it for 12,000 when you can get a Dave and Adams for eight or 9,000. Origin NFL 2022. $350, Panini 1-in-1 one one, 2020 to 2021, $1,500. Uh, Panini 1-in-1 one one NBA 2021 to 2022, uh, $1,999. Spectra 2021 to 2022, $1,200. And WWE Impeccable 650. So. Again, I have it all screenshotted in case you guys care, just to make sure all my I's are dotted and my T's are crossed. And the reason this is so incredible, and this is what I want to talk about, is it's like going to a you. It's like finding a car online, and it says that it's twenty five thousand, but then you find out that the base price is twenty five or uh, fifteen thousand, and they actually sell the car online. So instead of going to your local game store or supporting the local community, you're going to support them, which is fine, but you're giving them such huge margins that even the best online vendors, even the largest online vendors can never even dream of. I get it's live breaking. I understand it's entertainment, but my own experience, I started YouTube in 2009 under a channel called New Law Student mainly to join box breaks. And back then it was a lot more fun than today. I recently did a box break maybe a month ago and it was not fun. I hit nothing, which is not atypical, right? But if you calculate the prices, you calculate the salesman and showmanship and um, when these bids are going for, when they're doing team bids and you can get free teams for the price of pick two, choose one, you could get free teams. You could pick free, pick team. And I commented this on their app the other night is, you know, they're saying, oh, this is such a good deal. So they're either really bad at math or they're over exaggerating and making huge margins. I would not be surprised if every night 
commission, just even commission, let's say commission is 50-50, which is incredibly generous. I don't think it's that high, but let's just take it as 50-50. The box breaker is probably making over $200,000 a night, depending on if they open eminence and flawless and all of this stuff. And they can go on for hours. I understand why they stay there so late with these margins. It's 50% margin over current market price. And if you assume that Dave and Adams is market price, which it sometimes is even high. Stock X, if you look at the Stock X price and you compare it to all these numbers I listed, they're way over Stock X. Now, again, there is something said about entertainment. There is something to said by, oh, this is coming from a fresh case and so on, right? And they do sleeve it for you. They do open it for you. So there is some type of service that they're doing instead of you getting the box to open yourself. But with these margins, they're killing it. I, it would be not shocking because their setup is not difficult to, it's, they just need internet. Live streaming is not difficult to set up as I found out. Once you know how to set it up, you're good to go. Um, you're honestly already going to be successful because I've done it. And then once they set up and you understand OBS, you just click like the buttons in the order again and then it's done. But setting it up is a little difficult. So the the office they have and the internet and all of that, that does take a little bit of work to do. So they have tremendous margins. I've never actually seen margins like this where they can sell a box and again, and that's assuming that person is actually paying 750 for a box. Many times in team breaks, people will pay a outrageous amount of money to join a team break. Like let's say a, a team break should cost $700, you know, the real JR hits and he will pay $4,000. There's some insane amount of money to chase things. And it's one of the most interesting business experiments because the business itself doesn't make any sense if you look at it from, okay, what's in the pack, what's in the car. It's how much they like the person opening the pack. What's the premium that you would pay for somebody you like to open something almost like a celebrity, right? Like you can view them as a celebrity opening your packs and engaging with you. Otherwise, if you don't buy something, they won't engage with you. So those are the margins. I finally kind of had a good list of items. They don't, for obvious reasons, they don't always list the item for sale. Many times when somebody says, oh, I want this item, it's they will go ahead and pin it for them and then put the price and that's very, you know, it, it's hard to do instead of having a just a long list of items. They've only started doing that recently, but then if they have a long list of items, the one thing you can do is you can screenshot all the items, you can compare it to StockX or online at the lowest price or even eBay, and you can figure out that they're somewhere between 25 to 50% margins on, at least on all their products, which means that they're making so much money for every thousand dollars they're they're selling or 33 percent you know margin i mean like if it's if it's a 500 hundred dollar product and you charge 750 you're actually making 50 percent margin so 50 percent margin if you're making 50 percent margin and every night you sell hundreds of thousands of dollars of product your profit line is huge even if you take just a tiny percent commission again some of these breaks they might lose money they're always claiming they're losing money but this is how they can do this free product so it's very deceptive, but it's very intelligent. What they do is they charge so much money for the normal product, they can give a lot of stuff for the free. But it's not really free because you already paid, you paid 50% more money for a product than if you went to the marketplace like StockX or somewhere online, a big vendor online. And that big vendor online, StockX, they're making money too, don't get me wrong, they're definitely gonna make money as well. So. When it comes down to it, and, and really, this is a, an intriguing business model for live shopping. It shows, and this is a model they use in China all the time, it shows that if you have two different people, one of them, they have the same product, no longer, it's not a product issue anymore. Somebody will pay 10 times the price for this person to open a product because they have a following, they have social media, they're entertaining, it's like a pseudo celebrity, it's on, right? than this other person. 
So there is value. One of the things that is very hard for me to convey to my clients is the actual value of having social media. This is the actual value. I mean, many of my clients are just saying, why, why does it matter? I don't care. Well, this is the value. And it's the same for a car dealership. If somebody likes this car dealership and this car dealership is more famous, you know, it's, it's a Kia dealership with dancing hammer, hamsters than this Kia dealership that doesn't really do very much, then yes, the brand of this dealership, they can charge more for the same car. That's what I'm saying. For the same box, you can have five different box breakers and the premium they're charging depends on the actual box breaker, not the product. It's no longer about the product, it's about the social media influencer who you're, that's, well, that's the extra money that you're paying. I mean, there are cases where somebody has no following and they actually lose money from buying, you know, buying boxes, right? Uh, you, you, that, that famous case where the guy's yelling uh, about that and whatnot. So this just shows you, and as a marketer myself, you know, people ask why am I so intrigued by backyard breaks? It's because of this concept. It's actually a case example I would give to a real client, right? Why should you work on your social media? Why does having followers matter? Most clients, if in the context of, you know, outside, obviously in auto and in dentists and so on, they don't understand that. They don't understand, okay, okay, so we have a huge social media following and we post every day and, you know, we get engagement, this is all great, but where are the customers? It's, it's not only you get more customers, it's also the fact you can charge more per customer because they're paying for that celebrity is, um, I guess, I don't know what really to call it because it's, it's this new concept in marketing, but there's actual numeric, numeric analytical proof, which I love that I can show, Hey, look, these guys have a box. These guys have the box, the same box. It's the same type of box that come from a sealed case from a reputable source. These people sell the box for 500. These people sell for 750. What is the difference? Well, the difference is these people have 100,000 followers. So what is 100,000 followers worth? It is a worth a net profit of 50% over the market price. It's an easy calculation in my head. Um, it's something that I can now explain to, I mean, it's, it's fascinating because prior to this example, it would be tooth and nails, the, the client is going to, you know, they're going to do not believe this. So like, I mean, the, the idea of marketing is what is the value of having a large social media following? No one actually knows. Like if, if you're a dentist and you have 1000 followers versus a dentist with 100,000, how do you sell that dentist? Hey, we need to work on your social media. It's going to cost you money. And then you get to 100,000. Then it's going to be like, why do I care? And it's like, oh, there'll be more clients and more engagement. It's like, oh, great, thank you, that's awesome, right? But at some point, the dentists, their chairs fill up. Like if you're doing a good job on, on marketing in general, they won't have any more time, you know, they will have people in the chairs. So then the pitch has to be for a successful dentist, hey, we, when we go from 1,000 to 100,000, your chairs will still remain full and you'll have that extra level of security, but we can charge more money. And then their question would be, oh, how much more money? And that answer, that the answer to that question has never been really known. But for this, I can tell you, if you're on whatnot, you have zero followers, you're probably charging maybe break even if you're lucky, $500, $500 for the Origins product. When these guys can charge 750 and then they will sell more Origins they will sell more than you at 750, then you sell at 500, even $200. And they will make more profit, which is the bottom line. The bottom line isn't revenue, it's profit. So when I look at backyard breaks, there's a lot we can learn from them from a social media perspective, because they actually have numbers, analytics, data. And if you watch them and you just record them and you type, you, you, you look at the sold list, you look at who's buying what, there's a lot of very valuable data, not just for whatnot, but for any marketer to examine because this is the power of influencer marketing, which has always been kind of difficult to explain to a more traditional client because they want to see hard numbers. You know, I've uh, gone over this before, but we hired this uh, Mexican radio, radio, radio host 
and he never had any hard numbers. You can never prove that like he was actually doing something to help us sell a car and then we had to get rid of him after like six months. But I really did believe that he probably did something to sell cars. It just was never a metric that we could prove. Here, I can prove the metric. The metric is, okay, we sold 20 boxes of Origins and we made a 50%, at least a 50% over the next competitor online. That's the reason that we, that's the, the power of these influencers. You know, the client is always gonna to wanna to know, okay, cool, we gave this guy a contract for six months, we paid him $50,000, he comes you know, every weekend to do his little thing. How many cars do we sell? They don't wanna know what he's doing, how he's doing it. They don't even care how many hours he's gonna promote. They just wanna know how many cars did we sell above if we didn't hire this guy and what's the return on investment. I, you know, this was years ago when like influencers was just like a word. This was before Fire Festival. This was before all that. We were experimenting with it. And the problem we had was we can never prove the additional sales, right? It's just hard to prove because like, why did somebody come to the dealership? Did they come because they were already going to come? Did they come because of something online? You know, or did they come because of this guy? Hard. Hard to do. And even harder to do is like, hey, did this person pay more for the car because the influencer told them this is a good dealership? That's nearly impossible, but now today I can prove it, which is great. Hi guys.